So kind of out of nowhere, Microsoft announced finally the next generation Xbox. It's gonna be called the Xbox Series X. They have a lot of X's in these names. I think this might be a little bit kind of weird considering they already have an Xbox One X, but whatever. It's interesting that I think they're calling it the Series X, where I think they're probably gonna start maybe releasing consoles more often, kind of like how we had the Xbox One, and then there was the S, and then the X, and now there's a Series X. So I don't know, maybe we'll have a Series XX, who knows at this point, but this is what it looks like. They just dropped it, they had a trailer video, which I honestly thought was pretty hype as hell so i'd watch it it's pretty cool we don't really know much about like the back of it we do obviously know what it looks like with the top here but you can turn it uh sideways we don't know what the back looks like in terms of input output but they do say we'll be able to support like 4k 8k we can get to that so what are some uh actual news articles about this some specific stuff. Well, let's first look at the actual press release. So 2020 holiday season is when it's gonna be released. This is a year ahead of time announcement. There wasn't a lot, mostly interesting was the specs I found. So again, they say f they it's so powerful, it'll be able to do 4K at 60 FPS, which is a big deal. I think it would have to, it's like next generation. 4K is already kind of becoming popular. So the platform would definitely have to kind of be able to support that right from the get-go. Possibility up to 120 FPS at 4K. That's pretty crazy. It'll support variable refresh rate. Again, that's something that a lot of graphics cards and monitors these days support. So you kind of would want that in here and even 8K capability. So I'm assuming this is gonna be like HDMI 2.1. So it's really good that they're at least future-proofing it with specs in terms of capabilities, even if you know the GPU and hardware can't do like 8K 60 or something like that, it'll at least open up the platform to be able to do that uh, at a later date once the hardware kind of catches up. But it seems like the hardware, in terms of processing power, is actually still really, really good. Like this is basically gonna be the equivalent of probably like a high-end gaming uh, desktop. So it says custom designed processor leveraging latest Zen 2 and next generation blah, blah blah partners with AMD hardware accelerated ray tracing that's good and of course an SSD I mean oh my gosh you would have to assume and it seems like it's apparently going to be uh, NVMe interesting it says we are minimizing latency by leveraging technology such as auto low latency mode not really sure where that's going to come in but low latency is always good especially considering uh, I think a lot of times when it comes to consoles, the biggest cause of latency I thought was the TVs, because TVs are not really made with low latency in mind, but maybe with like more OLEDs coming into the game, and uh, I don't know, maybe they are just trying to reduce latency as much as they can, obviously, so maybe if TVs start lowering latency, they'll be ready. And here's a really good one. Obviously, it's still gonna be backwards compatible across all four generations of Xboxes. So you're gonna have, you're gonna be able to, I guess, play original Xbox games, Xbox 360, Xbox One X games, and now this, that's awesome, love it. They said they're gonna be leading the way with first party titles. I think there's only like two that they announced right now, Halo Infinite, and the other one was Hellblade Senwa's Sacrifice. So I'm not really sure what that game is, but I think those are the two that they announced. Now, specifically, so we can read more about the Verge and then we'll get to the specs where they, we can compare it to some other GPUs. So it says, yes, you will be able to turn it in a horizontal position. I'm gonna be interested to see how most people do it. So kind of like with the when the Xbox 360 came out, it was mostly shown in like the product images as being vertical, but I think a lot of people probably didn't have it vertical. They probably had it in their media centers, horizontal. So I'm... I don't know though, this is really boxy. This is like a monolithic uh, just rectangle. So I don't know. I think still most people probably have to fit it in their consoles uh, horizontally, their entertainment consoles that is. Uh, obviously they theorize in this article that the more volume I guess will probably increase the thermal headroom. That's always good. Hopefully we won't have any red rings of death. There's no rings on here, but that was a huge issue with the Xbox 360. They say they have some extra specs here, GDDR6 memory and uh, for the graphics card, NVMe solid state storage. That's all good. That's like what you would want in a next generation console. Honestly, I'm surprised they 
uh, or even shipping like Xbox One X. This Xbox One X, I don't think it has an SSD. You can obviously replace it if you want. Specifically for GPU power, twice as much power as the Xbox One X. That's actually pretty crazy. Twice as much power. I'm wondering what the price of this is going to be. I don't think it could really go above $500. I mean, maybe they could pull up $600. I don't know. The uh, We'll see. Twice as much power. That would put the Series X at around 12 teraflops. We can compare that. This is from An uh, Anantech. I can't believe I don't know how to pronounce that properly. Uh, but this compares... The different, uh, for in example, NVIDIA RTX cards. So 12 teraflops would put it basically kind of at this between a 2080 and a 2080 Ti RTX. I believe these are boost clocks too. So yeah, it's probably like a the base clock of an equivalent 2080 Ti, which is really good. And considering that that is a you know thousand dollar GPU alone. And then with this, you're gonna have to have everything in there for a $500 uh, console. I mean, that's you're getting a pretty good deal. Of course, I think a lot of times these consoles might even be like loss making, but uh, just to get people to use the platform. But we'll have to see. I mean, obviously they can't have too much of a deficit on cent uh, pricing these things. But uh, where was I here? Yeah. So I guess that's pretty much all we know about. We don't know much. Uh, besides what they've little bit they've revealed and what I've talked about in this video, what are my thoughts? I think this is really great. I'm gonna get it um, at launch. I did. I skipped the Xbox One X. I'm not a huge Xbox player. Um, I mostly because I kind of liked uh, PlayStation's exclusives recently. But I do have an Xbox One X. I just don't really use it that much. But you know, if they get some new, uh, I'm gonna get it either way, just because I want to be able to. You know, obviously, I have a tech channel. I would love to review this thing, so I'll buy it. And uh, just, I would want to have it. I want to have the latest generation console. I'd love to see how Sony responds to this. Obviously, Sony has been talking about how they, especially with their SSD, you know, loads in however many seconds versus like minutes. So this is really awesome. I'm excited about it. I'm loving that they're actually like doubling the power of the Xbox One X, which I think when it came out was even then. Uh, really powerful for a console, like surprisingly so. And I believe somewhere in this article, yeah, it says there is also apparently a model codenamed Lockhart expected to target lower resolutions around four teraflops, which is actually less than the Xbox One X. Very interesting. So obviously this is going to be like probably, um, I'm assuming beyond just like a PC where you can run, you know, any Windows game on any Windows PC, there might be some architecture in here that actually will require you to obviously have a new generation to be able to play the newer generation games. That's usually how consoles work. So it'll be interesting to see how kind of Microsoft balances that where they want to make everything kind of universal with Windows and uh, all their devices based on Windows. But at the same time, you know, this is basically custom made to be a game console. So there's going to be some optimizations in there. So and I think the fact they're calling it Series X, I'm really curious to see what they're gonna do with that. So it seems like they already have a lower end model coming. So I don't know, maybe this is gonna be the kind of thing where I was talking about where instead of having a new generation of console uh, every four or five years or whatever, uh, they'll just kind of make one platform and just upgrade it continuously, kind of like what they're probably moving with Windows to do, where there's not going to be like a new generation of Windows. It, they're just going to continually upgrade Windows 10, where basically Windows 10 is just going to become Windows, and it's so modular that they can, that any future game will be able to run on it, it doesn't matter. Now, probably that won't go on forever because, you know, technology improves, they, there might be new techniques that the older consoles, even, well, new console, but it will be old, where this, I don't know, there might be some limitation where they have to actually redesign an entirely new architecture for whatever reason, and then you get what I'm saying. But I think it seems like they're gonna try and stretch this out for a long time, and uh, I th hopefully they did kind of do that in mind modularly where uh, it won't rely too much on this specific architecture and it will be kind of future-proofed where if they want to upgrade the hardware it'll be very easy to do so so 
hopefully you understand what I'm saying. I don't want to ramble on too much about this, but overall, I'm really excited about it. I'll probably get it at launch. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this.